This old shoe box of film belongs to my wife and she gave it to me to scan into the computer so she can make photo albums. It was her grandfather's and the dates on some of the envelopes uh, go back to 1900. This old film uh, is different than today's film. Here's 19, 19, 19, 20. It's quite large. This is 4 by 5 film compared to it. You can see that it will require a holder the same length, but not the same width. It will fit in the middle of a 4 by 5 sheet. And likewise, it will fit into the holders like that. I usually use 120 film. But look at the difference. It's a lot longer and it's considerably wider. It's 70 millimeter film. So instead of 6 by 9, it's 7 by what, 12, something like that. This one has some nice density to it. Alright, so I have a scanner holder, film holder to scan it. I think you put it in emulsion side down. These pictures are slightly larger, longer. They're slightly longer than the holder. But uh, the camera I had restored, I think, is a little bit, makes pictures a little bit shorter. All you do is put it right up into that corner, like that, in the scanner. So it's a CanoScan 8800F. That scanner is nice because it has LED lights and you don't have to wait for anything to warm up. I use a program called ViewScan. And here you see the 8800F. It's a black and white negative. 2400 dpi is a lot. Let me change that. What I do is hit preview. I could do a screen capture to do this. But you see, there's no warm up involved, it goes right into it. That was a vertical picture, so the rotation is not correct. I'll change that. It only holds one photograph at a time. So change that to none. Whoop. Change it to flip. And there we have it. That's pretty good. Take a little off the bottom. As you can see, the parallax was off a little bit. The camera was crooked. But it looks like the people were straight. But what I'll do is I'll skew it. And uh,
that should straighten it out. That's what it'll look like, straightened out. The fence is a little bit too skewed. Uh, let's go back a little bit. Alright, five is the maximum skew. It skews and crops at the same time. You just hit scan and then you get the scan. At 1200 dots per inch it's pretty fast. This is the picture without the skewing involved. The people look straight up and down, but the houses are terrible. Alright, now I've got to name it. Now that's the picture corrected. So, end of example. Finder. Go to pictures. Canon. View scan. There it is. It's a 6 megabyte picture at 1200 dpi. That'll go up to over 24 megabytes. You, you could use much more uh, dots per inch. Alright. Alright, the 4x5 enlarger is set up now on the table. And it's set up for uh, 70 millimeter film. This was 616 film from the early 1900s, like in the teens. And what I intend to do is to print it on half sheets of 16 by 20. So I'll print it on 10 by 16. And it's about a 15 inch image right there. I have it in a 8341 negative holder. It's an anti-Newton glass. I replaced the glass in it. It had broken in transport and I bought some replacement glass. The uh, clear glass is on the bottom and the anti-Newton glass is on the top with the anti-Newton side towards the middle. The negative is 1 16th film. It goes emulsion side down on the clear glass so it's emulsion to glass anti-Newton on top. Upside down. I cut some old film to uh, mask the edges of the 4x5 area. It's actually 3 and 5 eighths by 4 and 5 eighths but you know who's counting. It's just right for this film. You can do the edges of the film if you want a black border. So it's just right. Squashes it a little bit, puts it in there. I'll tape it. It fits just right. So that scale had to be set all the way down to 4x5. 
and the lens, the 135 millimeter, yeah, 135 millimeter, five and a half inch lens. I have a little bit of headroom. I can get bigger if I want. I can print the full width of the sheet, 20 inches, if I want. So it'll be like 12 by 20, something like that. A little bit too big to handle. Since I have so many of these pictures, I'll, I'll use half sheets. I've got a lot of old stock to use up, so cutting them in half and printing 150, 200 of them, that won't be a problem. This is my restored Monitor 616 camera. It takes a picture almost as big as the ones my wife's grandfather took in 1919 and earlier. I have an old roll of film that I salvaged and taped back together. Ah, it's 116. But that'll get me the numbers. I have some new film downstairs in the closet that I'll put into this camera. I'll tape it onto that backing paper. I like that. F22 to F45. There's a big glass cube on it. Alright, this is a collection of film that's 70 millimeters to use in that camera. There's 116 film and there's 616 film. This is what was made for it. I have four rolls of 616. Yeah. One roll of, one more roll of 116. I have a roll upstairs to use the backing paper. There's some ortho 70 millimeter film. All this film is the same width, 70 millimeters. And it'll all cut the film to fit. It'll all cut the fit onto these backing papers. This is brand new Ilford HP5 Plus. Brand new. And this is old Kodak film pan. 70 millimeter. Some of it is perforated, some of it is not perforated. I'm gonna I bought it so I could find out which one works best in the camera. But I keep it in the bedroom because it gets a little hot upstairs when I don't have the air conditioner on. This picture was a 2400 dot per inch and it's a black and white JPEG and it's about 27 megabytes. Hi! As new bellows. They're made in England. The lens was cleaned, lubed, and adjusted. It's a Kodak Anastigmat F45, 126 millimeter.